On our quest to find the best budget AMD motherboard, we now turn to the Gigabyte B850 Gaming X Wi-Fi 6E, which will cost you just $190. And what do you get for that price? Or well, starting off with CPU power, here we get 12 plus 2 plus 2 power faces rated at a maximum of 60 amps. A pretty major downgrade compared to many other motherboards, especially when you don't even get the 248 pins for CPU power either. However, as is always the case, it really does not matter, and even high-end chips will do just fine on this thing and even with that they're still managing to keep a maximum memory overclock rating on these things of 8200 mega transfers per second which i don't think too many people will be utilizing to its fullest with such a budget board then moving down to PC expansion, you do have three PC slots, unfortunately none of them are physical 1x, but at least they're spaced out in a way to maximise the clearance for your graphics card. The main slot is, as you can expect, a Gen 5 16 laner, while the other two both feature just one Gen 3 lane, even though they are physically 16x. In terms of storage, you do get three M.2 slots here. The main one is, once again, Gen 5, and the other two are Gen 4, with all four lanes. And to top things off, you do get four SIDA connectors. Other internal connectors include six various fan connectors, so odds are you may need some splitters for your fans, depending on how many you have in your case, as well as three addressable RGB connectors and one classic non-addressable one. Then, turning things around to look at the rear I.O., something that Gigabyte has usually been pretty decent at, well here we have just 7 USB Type-A ports, which may or may not be enough depending on your setup, though at least only 2 of them are Gen 2. You also get just 1 Type-C port, which is a bit of a shame, given how even some of the more budget B850 boards can have 2. Though hey, at least you do still get PS2, which is nice, I guess, anyway. Apart from the PS2, another thing that a lot of more expensive mobile boards don't have that this one does, is actually Actually having both HDMI and DisplayPort as the integrated graphics options, while most others only choose one or the other. You also get 2.5 gig Ethernet as is to be expected, Wi-Fi 6E, not the Wi-Fi 7 that most other boards use, however that's a downgrade I don't think too many people will care about, and in terms of audio, you get just free audio jacks and no optical speed if at all. So for its price, it's a pretty confusing board, and what makes it even more confusing is that there's, well, another version of it, kind of? There is the identically named Wi-Fi 6 variant, which will cost you $10 less, and apart from the downgraded Wi-Fi, it also looks completely differently and misses half the heat sinks, but also has an additional PCIe slot for some reason. However, both of them suffer from having quite a few cuts when compared to what you can get at this kind of price point. And hey, given how you can even get some really good x870 boards for not much more, then these boards do truly struggle to find a niche at that price. That doesn't mean that are bad, however, and hey, if you really need PS2, then I guess you can get this one. So our Amazon and Yurg links that will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below. Where you're also going to find our Patreon because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way. Plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Elof Ronyak, Balaj Foka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Mech Summoner, Shane Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's all it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.